Karen, hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you very much. Good to see you, Rob. Good, thanks for joining us on, on my first cap. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll introduce you. I, you don't need much introduction to uh, anyone in the hockey world, to be honest, but uh, I will I, I'll give you a little bit of a, a roll call. So Karen Brown, MBE, um, um, the second most capped uh, ladies player in British history, 355 international caps, uh, 146 with, with GB, um, from 1984, when we'll, uh, we'll go back to there, through to, to June um, 1997. Um, Olympic bronze medalist, European. You've got the full set of medals, uh, European medals. Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, it's something to be very proud of. You've also had a, a proud uh, and uh, a fabulous coaching career. Uh, which I know is still ongoing. Um, I probably don't have time to touch on that. Uh, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot to, to, to get into. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a, fair, it's a fair roll call. Yes, yeah, I, I always get nervous when people start talking about myself. So, yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll look, move on then. We'll, we'll move, move on quickly. I'm yeah. hoping I can remember some of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to 1984. My memory's not so, so good in 1984, but um, uh, we, we've just been talking before we started recording about uh, first cap and uh, we'll, we'll, our records are around Great Britain, but I think you've got um, a, a really fantastic memory of your first cap uh, first international cap with England so maybe you just like to yeah. talk us through that a little bit yeah it was um memorable because it was at Wembley it was at Wembley in front of I think it was 67 or 69,000 fans he's, he's arguing um, over a couple of thousand yes. um, <laughs> unbelievable when you think of it now yeah um but uh, uh, yeah so it's a fantastic memory and I had no I went there in those days what happened was the England selectors picked an 11 and the Wembley game was always the first interna home international of the series so we were playing Ireland and they picked an 11 which started and then I was named as one of the five subs um, which was brilliant I was really young didn't expect to get on at all had no and then um, we were losing 1-0 at um, half time and sort of 10-15 minutes before half time Jenny Cardwell who was the coach said oh Karen and Ruth, Ruth Hine, who was a big mate of mine, we played Surrey County together in South of England together. And she said, go and warm up. And in those days, you ran on the Greyhound track. And as we mm. started running on the Greyhound track, this enormous cheer went up. And we, I honestly thought <laughs> someone had scored a goal. <laughs> Ruth and I were both looking around going, what's going on like this? And they were actually cheering because we were running up and down. You know, this probably shows how boring the game was. <laughs> like, like, they, they knew what was coming. They knew what was coming. And then, um, yeah, I, came, uh, I went on at half time, which I didn't expect at all. Mm. Um, and it was a oh, fantastic experience. I can clearly remember my first touch even. Yeah. Because I was came on on the right wing um, for substituted. I think it was Helen Murray came off. Helen, who later became Helen Woodward, married Clive Woodward. Um, and... I remember the first ball coming to me in the, the grass of Wembley, because even in those days, we were playing most of our hockey on AstroTurf. And I remember the ball coming to me and on TV and in the stands, the pitch looked immaculate, you know. In re reality, this ball was coming. And I was like, <laughs> and luckily it wasn't coming that hard and I managed to trap it, but I, dis I can picture all that really clearly. Yeah, I can, I can. So, I know exactly how you feel. My first was, you know, game was at QPR and it was a very bumpy AstroTurf. And that first ball that comes to you, you think, I've got to stop this. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise it's getting off to a terrible start. Yeah. And the worst, the worst bit was the crowd. If you'd missed the ball, the yeah. crowd then was so, because um, it was all schoolgirls yeah. um, that used to attend. And literally, if you missed a ball or you got tackled, the crowd, you'd actually hear them go, Ugh. <sighs> <laughs> you actually heard that. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's a relief. I've trapped that one. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you stopped the ball and, and went stopped on? Stopped the ball, threw an aerial, which everyone Ooh. told me afterwards. I know, I didn't. I never thought about it at the time, just threw an aerial pass. And so many people commented on that, that, that that's what yeah. I'd done. But I can just, I just remember thinking that was the right thing to do at the time and did yeah. it instinctively, didn't think about it. Um, but we lost the game 1-0. We lost to Ireland. We had a goal disallowed very controversially. Jane Swinnerton, I crossed the ball for Jane Swinnerton. She put the ball in the net and the umpire disallowed it. Mm. 
crazy decision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still you, aggrieved about it today. Your, <laughs> it would have been your first assist. Exactly. Uh, I think an aerial first up was um, yeah, quite something. It shows you were made for, for international hockey. Yeah. yeah. Or I didn't trust the pitch for it. To <laughs> <destination>. <laughs> well, quite an experience. Did, did, were, were the number of people on your mind at all when you got onto the pitch, or were you able to just blank it out? Um, when we came out for the warm up, I do remember that and thinking, oh my goodness, this is just incredible because it's just so many people. Um, I'd been in the crowd at Wembley not to watch a hockey match but to watch football matches um, but you just everyone all the hockey players all I remember was people like Rosie Sykes um, who else was there Pauline Gibbons and, and Barbara Hambly who and mm. they just really helped all the newcomers and they they just said you know they played every year at Wembley for goodness knows how long and they all just said look you just really enjoy it and because I didn't expect to get on in the warm-up I was like trying to see my parents in the crowd, which I no chance, <laughs> no chance. Um, but what the, it was lovely because um, the under 21 players were the ball girls. Mm. And I had actually ball girled the year before. So right. basically all my peers and colleagues were ball girling. So I spent more time chatting to them, to be honest, <laughs> in the warm up and stuff. Because, yeah. you know, they were my my mates as it were my teammates yeah. but no it was a great experience really it was good yeah what a fa fa fabulous memory yeah. um if we move on then to to great britain uh, yeah. and um i know you, we shared a little bit of detail with you but uh, 28th of april 1984 you were in berlin what can you what can you recall yeah. well that, that was that all came really quickly as well so I hadn't expected to play very much for england after i'd made my debut i then played the rest of the home countries, home, home nations tournaments. So I played mm. in every game after that. It was about three weeks later when we went to Berlin when the GB team was announced. And when we went at the time, it was part of the build-up for um, the 1984 Olympics. Mm. Um, so we were in training for that. I got drafted into the squad uh, and we went to a four nations tournament in Berlin. Um, so for me, it was a bit of a whirlwind, really. Mm. I, the stadium was fantastic, sunken into the pitch by the old Berlin, yeah. where the Olympic athletics track was, 1936 Olympics, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, great stadium. And I don't, I know that, I know because I've seen, because I got copied into the email that came to you from Katie Dodd. So I saw that I wouldn't have remembered the result and I wouldn't have known that we were playing Holland. So, okay. Apologies for that. That shows how bad. How <laughs> don't worry, bad I don't think is. I don't think you're alone. I don't think you're alone. It uh, it was uh, it was a, a baptism of fire. Um, I think moving from the home nations to, uh, to to playing the Dutch, the Germans, and one other. You say the four nations. Uh, Australia, I think it was. Oh, wow. I, I know. I know it was Australia, and yeah. they. I think in '84, I think they were the three medalists in um, in LA. In LA, and we obviously didn't. Um, get selected to go then so yeah. England were ranked three or four in the world at that time but GB because we never played as GB yeah, we yeah, had a track yeah. record and we didn't go which was devastating actually mm. so, so certainly for the older players for me I, it was I found it pretty devastating but dread to think what it must have been like for you know some of those people that I've mentioned yeah, yeah. people like Maggie Suyard who because of their age, never got the chance to go to another Olympics. I hadn't realised that. I know that the, 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 the men were, were in a similar boat until the, the Russians pulled out. Yeah. They? And, yeah. um, and that, that those, made it yeah. even more difficult for you. And, and in those days, there were only six women's teams that would mm. go to the Games, not 12 like there are now. So there were 12 men's teams and six women's. Yeah. So with only six, we actually, we actually stood no chance of going, really, which was terribly sad. Um, and we only found out six weeks before the games. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. No, I remember that a lot more than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it strange? Yeah. But you, so you played the Netherlands, uh, the, the, um, a, a, a tough game, uh, lost 5-1. Lost um, oh. uh, so the, the next game, um, uh, you... Uh, you had something to remember, but I'm not sure whether, whether you, you can you can recall. The next game was against uh, West Germany the next day. Yeah. 50 West second Germany. minute. I can't remember it. No, your first goal. I can't remember it. I can't remember my first goal for GB. 
it would I, I was playing on the forward line then so yeah. it would have been more likely an open play goal but if all mm. honesty i can't remember it i felt really bad so when i saw the email that came through yesterday i was like oh my god i scored in that he's bound to ask me because i've listened <laughs> to one of these and i was like racking my brain thinking well it was know, it was one of 27 so you, you oh. know, and, and with 355 games i think you know you, you you're allowed to be relatively selective in what what you yeah. can recall you mentioned that you played um every single position bar goalkeeper in those 355 games i did yeah pretty uniquely um i started my career as a forward um and then had obviously quite a long career sort of didn't finish playing for england until 99 um so i retired just before the sydney olympics sort of when the gb cycle picked up then mm. And um, in that time, you know, formations had changed and we'd gone from 5-3-2 to probably 3-3-1, 40, you know, like a bit like today, the modern game. And over that period, yeah, I, 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 I did two Olympics as a sort of high midfielder attacking player. And then my last Olympics in Atlanta, I played at the back, fullback. Yeah. Um, so I gradually made my way back through the pitch. But a lot of that happened by accident, injuries, substitute, you know, in those days, until the end of my career, there was only, you're only allowed three subs per yeah. game, two or three subs. So when players got injured, you just had to adapt. And mm -hmm. yeah, so and yeah, you, pretty you, unique. You mentioned um, um, the occasion of you moving to sweeper um, 30 years ago, we're, we're at the, the 30th anniversary of uh, quite a special tournament for, for you and the team at the time yeah it was it was it happened um when the england team won the gold medal out in belgium at the europeans and mm. we had a great tournament sue slocum was the coach and we played really well throughout we had you know people were knocking in the goals and we were scoring goals from penalty corners and open play i think it was the first real tournament that jane sixsmith sort of She'd, she'd obviously gone to the 88 Olympics, um, but that was her first big event and she didn't actually play that much. But by 1990, she was like, you know, a real dominant force in the game. And we had, I think, people like Tina Cullen and Kate Parker, I remember, mm. um, Jill Atkins. Like, we had a really good team, yeah. actually. The team that won a lot of the ones that won the bronze medal in 92 yeah. in Barcelona. And, um, yeah, we beat the Dutch, who were favorites as, as they ever are we beat yeah. them in the semi-final played really well and then in the final we had um vicky dixon i remember who was a fantastic player had broken her finger i think it was in the semi-final and then uh in the final we were winning we were beating the germans i think we were one or two goals up it was about 20 minutes to go and they had a short corner and they undercut it and it hit jill atkins on the hand and broke her thumb i think it was and so, of course, all our defensive cover had gone. And I always remember Sue Slocum trying to be really calm, going, but her neck was like, what is she going? <laughs> and Karen, you will move to sweeper. And I think Jane C Smith, who was a substitute, came on in my position in high midfield. And that was my first um, time I'd played in the back line for England in the European Cup final. Yeah. with defending a, a two-goal lead, I think we were. Yeah. But, yeah. And you, you held out for a gold medal. Wow. We did hold out. I, I, I'll tell you, I reminisce about, I do recall, because it took quite a long time for then medical staff to get Jill off the pitch. And uh, as I say, we were winning. And the Germans, obviously, we had a hit out because it was a foul from the penalty corner. And we had a hit out. And I remember standing over the ball and Kath Johnson was, was next to me. And the Germans had already formed like the ring, you know, to ring the fence, you yeah. know, ring the free health. And they'd literally surrounded us. And Kath goes to me, oh, Karen, you're taking it. I was like, oh, right, OK, thanks, Kath. You know, she, was, <laughs> she was my fellow fullback and she decided yeah. that I was going to take it. And she went, what are you going to do? And reminded me of the, the Wembley moment. So I went, I think I'll throw an aerial. Like this. It, just, <laughs> it just, they were so close. And Kath went, literally went, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and I can remember that. And I was like, thanks, Kath. That's given me a lot of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I, mean, I was going to ask if it was an error. It was the days before self-pass, obviously. And, uh, exactly. You, you, you yeah, you had to, you had to find a way. I, 
Yeah, I don't think I'd have run it out from the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's lovely. Some 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 great uh, great memories from um, uh, from from Wembley to Berlin to Belgium, you say, and obviously then on to uh, to to, to uh, the Olympic bronze in in Barcelona. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll move on to the, uh, a, a fun bit that I've been doing with everyone to try and put it into some context. So some some other debuts in 1984. See what you can do. Oh. See what you can do with these. Um, there is a, a very famous uh, um, athlete made. She's a middle distance athlete made her Great Britain debut in 1984, uh, and it ended in rather dramatic and controversial headlines. Um, at the um, LA Games. I'm smiling because I know this one. Okay. And the reason why I know this one really well is because I actually trained with her. Oh, wow. Um, because um, I lived in Surrey and Zola Budd um, was brought over by the Daily Mail in quite yeah. controversial circumstances. And she was based in Guildford in okay. Surrey. And they wanted some training partners for her. Um, and Brilliant. I used to run for the county middle distance. And yeah. On a Sunday morning, this was arranged with my athletics coach at the time. A group of us who all ran for Surrey went over about six of us to train with Zola Bud on a Sunday morning on a run on the um, yeah. South, South Downs. Well, um, I lasted <laughs> about 200 metres with her. And then, and then <laughs> literally she was miles ahead of us. So uh, She yeah, had just was, broken the world record, hasn't she? she a, yeah, and I watched, her break, I watched her break a world record at Crystal Palace, a thousand metres world record. I mean, incredibly talented athlete. Yeah. But you realised very quickly, I mean, she hardly spoke any English. She was incredibly shy when I... We, we met her, you know, and finding it, it she was freezing because it was, I can't yeah, remember, yeah. but it was cold and she was used to sort of the warm weather of Bloemfontein in South Africa. And yeah, I just remember feeling incredibly sorry for her. And then yeah. what happened was, poof. Did, yeah. did you train with your shoes on or did you take your shoes off? I, I, everyone asked me that question. No. <laughs> sorry to be so she, obvious. She, she wore shoes as well. It wasn't on the track. We were okay. running cross country um, and she wore shoes as well. Yeah, great experience. I've yeah, got yeah. great experience. And, and of course, for those um, who, who don't remember who get to watch this, she um, she she um, had a collision with the American favourite and home favourite yeah. in the Los Angeles Olympics, and uh, both both of them failed to do what they yeah. wanted to do. They both and, fell and to the ground. Created quite quite antagonistic headlines of, of, of who did what, who, who done whom. Yeah, very uh, sad. Very excellent. sad. Uh, really, uh, yeah, sad, but um, yeah, in fact, it, 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 I'm really pleased I, I found that one out and, and brought that one up. Um, the, the other two aren't going to be quite as interesting, I don't think. Oh. But, um, yeah, so 1984 was famous for, I think, if not the first, one of the uh, first charity singles. Oh, oh it must, uh, was it Live Aid? It was, it was um, before Live Aid, actually. Oh, Live Aid was, it was 85, 86. but it was, it was the, it was, it was not something Aid, and it was the Christmas song. Oh. Can you sing it to me? And then I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Do they know it's oh, Christmas it time? <laughs> oh, what's that one? Yeah, I know that one. Uh, yeah, that ba one? so Band-Aid was the... Band-Aid, that's yeah, it. Yeah. The, charity, the charity single in yeah. 1984. Um, and this one, this one's for the uh, the, the, the boffins, really. Uh, but th there was a, a, a scientific breakthrough made, which has revolutionised criminal investigation in um, oh, wow. 1984. 1984. Wow. This is a total shot in the dark, but criminal investigation. DNA. Yes. <laughs> DNA <laughs> testing. Wow. Was was, wow. Uh, was was first introduced a chap called Alec, Alec Jeffries. I, I quite enjoy doing my digging to find out what what I can bring up for the years. Very good. So they're they're the three. What else? I could, there were one or two others I could have gone with. Um, the first Apple Macintosh computer. Um, um, the first female captain of a Boeing seven four seven. Beverly Burns. Um, so so yeah, one or two others. Okay, we're now going into the sort of the quickish fire questions. The best player that you played with. The best player that I played with, um, I played with an awful lot, an yeah, awful lot of really talented players. Um, 
Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to single it down to one because that okay. would be really hard. Um, Violet McBride in the early days of my career, I just thought yeah. was a phenomenal hockey player. Vicky Dixon was also incredibly yeah. talented. Um, in my later years, uh, Jane Sixsmith, I really enjoyed playing with. Yeah. Um, we had a lot. Uh, we we had a quite really good connection on the mm. pitch. So I really enjoyed playing with yeah. her. And then I, pro- I mean, I've been incredibly lucky that I think I've played yeah. with some fantastic goalkeepers. Um, you know, from Hilary Rose to Joe Tompkins, and even started with with like Pauline Gibbon, who I only played for one season with, but I thought she was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so some real. Yeah, nice, nice to shout out. I think, yeah. Um, yeah. My, my my hope is to sort of bring one or two people into the into the discussion. There's some memories of some some superb players, mm-hmm. and it's nice actually that you you picked out one of the goalies. The goalies can sometimes get. Yeah, you kind of think I I I've maintained as a coach, you don't win anything without a good goalkeeper, mm. and I, that's that's always held true for me. Yeah. Um, if you've got a good goalkeeper, you can be competitive. Yeah. Um, and if your goalkeeper is a little bit below par, then it becomes really challenging. But if you've got a great goalkeeper, if you've got a good goalkeeper, you're, you're in a good place. But if you've got a great goalkeeper, you're in a very good place. Mm, good. OK, maybe, maybe I'll get you narrow this one down a little bit more. The best player you played against? Lausanne Lejeune. Dutch. Dutch. Dutch player. Okay, that one came very quickly. So uh... Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, the, some of the Australian players, you know, were... Equally good, Alison, Annan, but I would say Lausanne Lejeune, I thought was mm. out of this world, really, really good. Yeah, I could, yeah, Mul- sense it, you sense it in your voice, the admiration. So, mm. nice. Okay, so um, um, your favourite kit combination? Favourite kit combination? Yeah, so red, white, and blue, oh. white, blue, and red. The, the ladies yeah. tend to go for actually more sort of similar colours, the, the men it tend to be one or the other. At yeah. least quite I I'll be honest. I became biased by the all red that the GB yeah. women played in in um, Rio and yeah. probably okay. in the foyers. I did really like all red, but when I played, my favourite kit was probably the um, the Barcelona '92 kit with the sort of Union Jack. Yes, sort of very small Union Jack emblazoned in the in the tracksuit and in the playing suit. I really liked that one. So that would probably be my favourite, which was. White, blue, blue, I think, actually. I think we have okay. blue socks, bizarrely. Mm-hmm. But I, if I'm honest, I always fancy, I always preferred a red shirt. For yeah. me, red, blue, white. The red shirt was was Great Britain to me. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Mm. Uh, best venue? Well, Wembley was pretty good. Um, yeah, difficult to match. Wembley was good. 60-odd thousand. Uh, I really enjoyed playing in Amstelveen yeah. in the Dutch, mainly because the crowd was so close mm. and we were always the underdogs. And, yeah, yeah. and I liked the fact that um, the crowd really got involved in the games. Um, but the, the, I think the best stadium that I've worked in was probably the London 2012 Olympic makeshift stadium. Yeah. The atmosphere, I mean, the crowd made it and mm. uh, the people make it, but the atmosphere to be part of GB in during that was just phenomenal it was a, a real privilege to be mm. part of that and yeah well, I think I think if you could package that arena up and transport it around for GB and England's playing or GB to play in it would be phenomenal yeah yeah and no, I well I, I I watched um a few times and there I can I can understand that uh, Amstel Veen is especially particularly playing against the, the Dutch ladies who were yeah. Just had this aura, didn't they? Yeah. They, they were the they were the ones to beat, beating yeah. them in their own um, uh, backyard. Um, must have been quite something special. And and one to finish off with, um, just a bit of a downer, really. Uh, the worst fitness test. Oh, the worst fitness <laughs> test. They, well, if you'd asked me which was the best fitness test, I'd have struggled to answer that. As well. <laughs> uh, the worst fitness test for me was probably not what you'd expect so the worst things that i was when we did long distance running right um i hated that because i didn't really see much sense in it from an, <laughs> an athletic so my mind used to rebel against it whereas things like the bleep test the cycle test and 
running on the treadmill, you know, with the mask on, the lac lactate test. I didn't actually mind. I didn't enjoy it, but mm. I knew that it was going to be over in sort of 20 minutes or, or 15 minutes or 10 minutes, whatever. So that felt, but anything over sort of, I remember at times we were sent on fitness tests to go and do a five mile run. And I was yeah, like, then, well, that, that was, what's, um, what's the point uh, of that? Roger Self uh, used to, used to like his five mile runs. There's, there's, oh, yeah. um, there was uh, um, a sort of folklore story of, uh, I think it was Billy McLean, Scottish player, who, who told Roger Self if someone hits the ball five miles, then he'll go and chase it. But otherwise, don't, don't good comment. Know. All right, the hockey pitch is how big? 110 by, you know, and you want me to run five miles? I'm like, what's the point of that? But there we go. So okay. that would be that. That would be what I. Yeah, yeah. no, I can, I can understand that. Super. Thank you so much. Hopefully, it was uh, uh, some, some fun for you. It was for me. It'd be great to hear your, your your stories. Um, good. Um, oh. Thank you. Thank you very, very much.